going to go offline on the vision at the moment. Good morning. Hello, how are you doing? Hello. We might sit in these couple of chairs. I'm going to bring the camera a bit closer. Good morning. How are you? All right. How are you? Yeah, it was pretty oh. good. Yeah, yeah, we got sick last oh. week. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, cold or something. Yeah, cold. Oh. Cold. David's mum and dad had it when he oh. arrived, and then we got it from there. Oh. Yeah, we're big. We went back to work last week. There you go. Sorry, it's a bit more. Yeah, focus is now. Hang on, not quite. I might have to go back a bit. It's a bit too close to come, isn't it? <laughs> Is that okay? You happy with it like that? That's fine. Colin always can see us a bit better rather than having a look at a half empty room. Although they're not able to hear very well. So, <coughs> how are you doing? All right? Of course, thank you. Yeah. That's good. How are you? That's good. More work for me when Jen comes back. <laughs> More work, more finances. Yes, and when he opened the cupboard, open the door, he never closed back. Let it open. Uh, okay. And I just, yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep telling someone, not much work here. Oh, yeah, that's it. And I said to him, after you feed the plate, can you just rinse it or feel the water so the food is not stuck into the bowl or pot? No. Keep telling him. Only when I told him to do that, after that, the same thing. And he blamed the dishwasher. He said, not a good dishwasher. <laughs> because if it's a good one, you don't need to run. You just stay in it and then done. <laughs> And it's done, I take it back, still the food stuck on the fork, on the spoon, on the bowl, and I can't say anything. <laughs> so, it's it hard. Boys. Yes. Boys. <laughs> oh. Hello, America. Oh, I'm going to I have to widen my view. Well, that's fine. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Hello. Oh, we can hear. Hello. Hello. I'm just going to try and position this so you can see us all. I just want to fill by an empty room, but I'm going to have to go like that. Yeah, that's what you're cheering. Yeah. 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 We've got a cold. No, oh, I've still got a cold. It'll take a while to show oh, you. But that's all right. Yeah. Take vitamin C, SLC. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. 
Yeah. Don't need this anymore, do you? No. Hello, Carl. How are you doing? Good morning. Hello, Carl and Rose. Hello, Marika. Hello, Hello Colin. Darby. Pam. Hello. David. You can see us all a bit more clearly now. I've moved the camera a little bit. so. Okay. Because we're not filling the centre circle. So, uh, <laughs> welcome, everybody. I'm going to invite you to stand as we open the work. Yes. Thank you, please take a seat. Uh, and uh, let's just join in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to gather together. We pray that you're here amongst us in all that we hear this morning from your word and that we read together. We pray that you'll inspire our hearts and minds, Lord, that we may be your servants and your instruments in this world. I challenge us, Lord, in those time, in those uh, areas of our lives where we need to change and um, help us move forward positively and uh, with your strength. Pray for those that are unable to be with us this morning, especially those who are ill. We will watch over them and um, heal them and uh, bring them soon back into our midst. We'll be with all your children everywhere, whatever they are doing. We pray in your name. Amen. <coughs> um, so, uh, we're at Doctrine of Life, Chapter 10. As you remember, you will remember there's a couple of chapters that all have very, very similar headings. And we're in the third of four, of four today. So this is the third. Um, I'll just share with you my reflections or the things that I noted down from last time, which is a month ago, two months ago. It was a while, a month ago. A month ago. So uh, back to the uh, yeah. over there. So these, these are the notes that I took. They're fairly brief. Um, so the last heading was to the extent that we turn our backs on all kinds of adultery because they are sins with love and chastity and these are the notes that we, that we talked about, anything we go after that is not of God is like an adultery if you don't practice something you won't know it is, it as a truth we talked about negative modes of being and positive modes of being. So shunning evil and loving the good. There's the, these two opposites come, come together. <clears throat> uh, we're in adultery with our whole being or in marriage and chastity with our whole being. You cannot serve two masters. Uh, there is what is reconcilable with good and truth and there is that which is not reconcilable. And the biblical principle is that we need repentance and regeneration first. When I see evil to my knees to begin with me. So, uh, you know, that um, removing the plank from your own eye before you move. Oh, hello. <coughs> I have to move the camera back again. Yeah. <coughs> hello, come on in, Henry. Um, so, the need to. Me? Yeah, I see evil with hello, come on in. I'm just going to move us again. Oh, my camera's frozen. Look at that. Oh. Uh, what do I do about this? Excuse me, I'm just going to have to do something here. Uh, a bit of technical fiddling. Just hold on. Let's see if this does the job. Are we back? Yes, we're back. All right, now I'll move this. How are you, Anna? Well, I should have left it where it was. Yeah. I'm going to go back to it. Right, I'm going to go here. Can you see everybody, Carl, apart from me? Just not quite. Okay. How's that? And you'll miss you. You'll miss me. Yeah. There we go. Right, and, and drag this one. So we can be a bit more clearly. 
All right, come on, dear. I miss Dan as well. Oh, no, you can't see, can't see me. Dear me, I had it all set up. Never mind. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. Stand up there, isn't it? And stands there. Hello, Stan. Hello, Welcome. Stan. Hello. Uh, right. Hello. Uh, now, just go back to my what I was sharing before, just sharing notes on the last time. Um, we came up with these tasks to seek and practice what is good. It's pretty simple, basic, basic task to do, very useful. Uh, notice how we externalize the problem trying to fix or blame someone else. So, you know, we see an evil out there, it's very easy to do, isn't it? And we need to look at it within. And notice what we chase after that might be adultery that are not of God. Interesting task. Now, just, I wanted to add this little reflection on the end. As I thought about these previous two chapters, I came up with a single word for each. So chapter eight, which was on killing, seems to me to be about the destruction of what is good. If I were to summarise it down to a single word, I got the word destruction. Chapter 9, Adultery, seems to me to be about the corruption of what is good. So the question is, how would we boil this chapter down to a single word? What would that single word be when we're talking about that? So just hold that in your mind as we read. I have to say I'm not sure I've got an answer to that question myself, but just see if, if there's a single word that stands out to you about this chapter, what is it? Um, that's, that's the question that I'd like to see. Okay, I'm going to read as we have been doing from the word to start us off, and we're on Isaiah chapter 34. If you want to follow along, feel free. Um, <coughs> On these Bibles, it's page 694 at the start. <coughs> that's voice. Um, and uh, if you feel like just look like listening, that's fine too. So Isaiah chapter 34. Right. Right, 694. <laughs> Got it, Henry? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so this is what this is right. Come near, you nations, to hear and heed you people. Let the earth hear and all that is in it, the world and all things that come forth from it. For the indignation of the Lord is against all nations and his fury against all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has given them over to the slaughter. Also their slain shall be thrown out. Their stench shall rise from their corpses. The mountains shall be melted with their blood. All the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled up like a scroll. All their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falls from the vine, as and as fruit falling from a fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Indeed, it shall come down on Eden, and on the people of my curse for judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made overflowing with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has a sacrifice in Bosra, and a great slaughter in the land of Edom. The wild oxen shall come down with them, and the young bulls with the mighty bulls. Their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust saturated with fatness. 
Sure. Sure. We'll read a little bit further on. <coughs> Um, so we'll read um, as we've done from the um, from the chapter um, chapter ten. Uh, it's again a really relatively short chapter. There are two longer paragraphs. I think eighty four is one that's longer that has some biblical quotations in it, and then the last paragraph eighty six is longer. But the others are very very short, so it won't take us too long to read through this. Um, I'm wondering whether anybody might be happy to do some reading. I'm really happy to read. Are you happy to read? Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. So we're going from 80 to 86. Right. Yep. It's you eight, yeah. turn our backs on all kinds of theft because they are sins. We love honesty. In earthly terms, theft means not only theft and robbery, but also cheating and taking other people's assets by some pretext. Spiritually understood though, theft means depriving others of the truths of their faith and good actions motivating, motivated by their caring. While in the higher sense, it means taking from the Lord what is properly his and claiming it for ourselves. That is claiming righteousness and worth for ourselves. These are all kinds of things. <clears throat> and like all kinds of adultery and all kinds of killing, as just described, they too are united. They are united because one is within the other. The evil of theft infects us more deeply than some other evils because it is united with guile and trickery. And guile and trickery work their way into our spiritual mind where our thinking with understanding takes place. We shall see below that we have a spiritual mind and an earthly mind. The reason we love honesty to the extent that we turn our backs on theft as a sin is that theft is also deception, and deception and honesty are two opposite things. This means that to the extent that we are not devoted to deception, we are devoted to honesty. Honesty also means integrity, fairness, faithfulness, and morality. On our own, we cannot be devoted to these so as to love them for what they are, for their own sakes. But if we turn our backs on deception, guile and trickery, sins, we have a devotion to these virtues that come not from ourselves, but from the Lord, as explained above. This applies to priests, administrators, judges, merchants and labourers, to all of us then in our various roles and tasks. There are many passages in the word that say this, the following being a few of them. Those who walk in righteousness and say what is upright, who loathe oppression for the sake of profit, who shake bribes from their hands in order not to accept them, who block their ears so as not to shed, hear bloodshed, who close their eyes so as not to see evil, they will dwell in high. Jehovah, hope, and that's from Isaiah 33, 15 to 16. Jehovah, who will dwell in your tab tabernacle, who will live on your holy mountain? Those who walk uprightly and do what is fair, who do not disparage others with their tongues, and who do not know evil to their companions. That's from Psalm 15, 1 to 3. From Psalms 101, 6 to 8. My eyes are toward the faithful of the earth, so that they may sit down with me. Anyone who walks in the path of integrity will serve me. No one who practices deceit will sit in the midst of my house. No one who speaks lies will stand in my presence. At dawn, I will cut off all the ungodly of the earth to cut off from the city all those who work iniquity. In the following word, the Lord tells us that we are not truly honest, fair, faithful or upright until we are inwardly honest, fair, faithful and upright. 
in Matthew 5.20, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of the heavens. Righteousness that exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees means the more inward righteousness that is ours when we are in the Lord. As for our being in the Lord, he also teaches this in John 17, 22 to 23 and 26. The glory you have in me, you gave me, I have given them so that they may be one just as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be made perfect in one, and so that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I may be in them. Matthew 5, 8 and 48 says, This shows that people become complete when the Lord is with them. These are the people who are called pure in heart, the ones who will see God, and the ones who are perfect like their Father in the heavens. So there we go. I noticed in 81 above that the evil of theft infects us more deeply than some other evils because it is united with guile and trickery. And guile and trickery work their way into our spiritual mind where our thinking with understanding takes place. So now I need to say something about the human mind. On the human mind being our understanding together with our will. See 43 above. We have an earthly mind and a spiritual mind. The earthly mind below and the spiritual mind above. The earthly mind is our mind for this world and the spiritual mind is our mind for heaven. The earthly mind can be called the animal mind while the spiritual mind can be called the human mind. We are differentiated from animals by our having a spiritual mind that makes it possible for us to be in heaven while we are in this world. It is, also, it is also what makes it possible for us to live after death. We can use our faculty of understanding to be in the spiritual side of our mind and thus to be in heaven, but we cannot use our faculty of willing to be so unless we turn our backs on evils because of our sins. And if our will is not in heaven, as well as our understanding, we ourselves are still not there because our will drags our understanding back down and makes it just as earthly and animal as itself. We can be compared to a garden, our understanding to light and our will to warmth. A garden has light in winter but no warmth, while it has both light and warmth in summer. So when all we have is the light of our understanding, we are like a garden in winter. But when we have both light in our understanding and warmth in our will, we are like a garden in summer. In fact, the wisdom in our understanding comes from spiritual light and the love in our will comes from spiritual warmth. The spiritual light is divine wisdom and spiritual warmth is divine love. If we fail to turn our backs on evils because they are sins, the cravings of our evils clog the deeper levels of our earthly mind to the side where our will resides and are like a thick veil, like black clouds beneath the spiritual mind, preventing it from opening. However, as soon as we turn our backs on evils because they're sins, the Lord flows in from heaven, takes the veil away, dispels the cloud and opens the spiritual mind, thereby admitting us to heaven. As already noted, as long as cravings for evil behaviour clog the deeper levels of the earthly mind, we are in hell. But as soon as those cravings are dispelled by the Lord, we are in heaven. Again, as long as cravings for evil behaviour clog the deeper, le deeper levels of the earthly mind, we are earthly people. But as soon as those cravings are dispelled by the Lord, we are spiritual people. Again, as long as craving for evil behaviour clog the deeper levels of the earthly mind, we are animals, differing from them only in that we are capable of thinking and talking, even about things we cannot see with our eyes. We can view this because of the ability of our understanding to be lifted up into heaven's light. As soon as those cravings have been dispelled by the Lord, though, we are human because we are thinking what is true in our understanding, because of what is good in our will. And yet again, as long as cravings for evil behaviour 
clog the deeper levels of the earthly mind. We are like a garden in winter, but as soon as those cravings are dispelled by the Lord, we are like a garden in summer. In the word, the union of our will and understanding is meant by heart and soul and by heart and spirit. And when it says that we are to love God with all our heart and with all of our soul in Matthew 22, 37, and that God will give a new heart and a new spirit in Ezekiel. Our heart means our will and its love, while our soul or spirit means our understanding and its wisdom. Right, that's it. That's the whole chapter. That's it. The last paragraph is very definitely what this one is. Right. What stands out to you? What stands out to you about what we've heard? Well, I really like the garden in winter and the garden in summer picture. It, it, it gives a really, yeah, it says, you know, it's still light, but it's like the light of winter, not the light of the forest. And the, uh, the idea that it's the warmth that brings the growth to the garden. Excuse me. And we need that warmth in the light. Anything else anyone notices? Out. We have to behave in a way that we can uh, live the way according to this. Then you know, whatever we what we think start with the thinking, and and maybe we just live by the Ten Commandments. Yes, yes. That's always the good guidelines. <laughs> yes, that's right. And you know, re remember what it's saying here about in order to live in one way. We shun another. So we're shunning what is evil to live what is good. Yes. That's, I think, one of the important features of these four chapters that we've been talking about these individual commandments. Yeah. Anybody online got anything that they want to, uh, <coughs> to say about uh, what we've heard? Maybe he didn't hear you, I don't know. Yes. And I noticed you said the volume seems low. I don't think I can do very much about it. Okay. I'll just share with you some of my, uh, my observations. Um, again, I'm going to share my screen because they're up here. And you can see them as well as, as here. Then. <coughs> So in the first paragraph, I noticed the different levels of what theft means. So theft means depriving others of the truths of their faith and good actions motivated by their caring. That's at the, the, what Swedenborg calls a spiritual level. And that's at the celestial level, the highest level, he talks about this idea of claiming righteousness and worth for ourselves. I think that's a really important idea. No, I am good. That idea. Saying I am good. No, you're not. It is the Lord who is good. Only. And that's the, that's one of the key ideas that stands out to me here. Uh, in 81, it said, Theft infects us more deeply than some other evils because it is united with guile and trickery. And guile and trickery work their way into our spiritual mind where our thinking and good understanding takes place. And I'm puzzled over that sentence. I don't know what you think of it. I, feel, I, I, I just feel like I need to do a bit more processing of that one. I didn't really quite understand it. Uh, if we turn our back on deception, guile, and trickery of sins, we have a devotion to these virtues, that is, integrity, fairness, faithfulness, and morality, that come not from ourselves but from the Lord. Here again is this idea that it is the Lord who is good, not we, ourselves. 
So any goodness that resides within us is from the Lord. It yes. is not from us. And that seems a very important uh, idea from this, this chapter. Can we go back to 81? Yes. Because I, I think um, like it's it's that it's so easy for us to think that it's ours. So this is what they're saying. They're saying it infects it infects us more deeply than others because it's so easy. To, like I did a really good job there, you know. Like it's just and and the way the world encourages us to be, like you know, to to claim righteousness for ourselves. You know, I'm I'm a good person. As long as I'm a good person, that's okay. You hear it so often. As long as I'm a good person, I don't need anything else. And so you know, it's saying here that it affects us more deeply. You know, it's Superficially, that seems like an okay statement, doesn't it? Like, you know, I'm, I'm a good person. Okay, so it's to do with the super. It's to do with it being a superficial appearance, the way things look. Uh, but our internal and our thought process processes get misled by that. Is that what yeah, that that type of thing. Like, well, it affects us really deeply because. It, Superficially, it seems really, you know, like it seems as though it's common sense, but, and so it goes right into our inner being, and you know, and people, and people outside will will confirm that as well for us. Yeah, yeah, you're a good person. Like, yeah, it's all really easy to get wrapped up in that. Okay. I don't know. I was just yeah. I wondering. Yeah. Oh, and then eighty-six, which is that very long, long paragraph at the end. So I noted this this idea of the earthly or animal and spiritual or human mind. So there's two levels of mind that he's talking about here. Uh, our understanding may be in heaven, but unless we turn our back on evils because of our sins, our will is not, which therefore drags our understanding back down. So we've got two divisions of mind. We've got the um, the human mind, the spiritual mind, the animal mind, the earthly mind, that's one division. But the other division is like this, will and understanding. And they both have, so there's will and understanding at both levels. <coughs> uh, so I just noted that. So you've got, yeah, I imagine, four sections in here. Uh, and then the comparison to warm and white as well. Okay. Evil, evil clogs the flow between the spiritual and earthly mind. So, yes. where so where there's evil in our in our hearts, then there's a there's a layer preventing the two contacting themselves, contacting each other. Uh, in which case, we are in hell and are animals. Why does he say and are animals? Sorry. Why does he say that animals and are animals? Uh, so. I know you have a great affection for animals, uh, yes. Marika, so mm. this is why we react to it. So yes. he's talk, so what he's talking about is, remember he's talking about an animal mind, a lower mind, and a higher mind, the spiritual. And that spiritual mind is what he's talking as being human. You know. Now, what an animal does, you know, we look at animals, and, and there are parts of us that are very animalistic. So we have instincts. For example, like the maternal instinct is something that is built particularly into women, but it also into the female of many other species as well. There's an instinct there, there's a, a drive which pushes us in a particular direction. Now it's that drive that he's talking about. So he's not trying to put animals down, but he's saying there's that drive that is within us, which we can get carried away with at times. Right, and sometimes we need to rein it in and control it. And that's the human part of the mind is, is right to do that. If people, Does that help? Would, if David, if people would live like the elephants in a family, there would not be single mothers and children left alone. They have a fantastic family life. Yeah, so just bear in mind, he's not, <coughs> he's not trying to say that animals are evil. That's, that's an important but thing. Cool down there. He's not saying that. But what he's saying is that we, as human beings, when we are driven by our more animalistic side, will tend towards evil. Okay. That's, so that's just important to bear in mind. 
Uh, there's a, a lovely little uh, story that I read, just going back months and months, about a man, a man who sees a snake fall into the fire. Right? And he says, so he picked the snake up to get it out of the fire, and the, and the snake bit him. Yeah. And then he, so he dropped it again, and it dropped back into the fire. So he then went and picked it up again. So the, and the man was questioned, and he said, and the question was, the snake bit you the first time, why did you pick it up the second time? And he said, the snake's nature is to bite. Yes. My nature is to help. Yeah, that's nice. Yes. You see? Okay. Now, he could have said, oh, well, you know, you bit me, I'm just going to let you stay in the fire. But he was saying, my nature is to help. So he's exercising his human side. Okay. Whereas perhaps the snake doesn't have the same freedom to, to choose or you know, unable to recognize that help is receiving by him. Mm -hmm. So that's absolutely a useful way to, to think about it. Uh, Can I say something about the animal business, David? Yes, go for it, Sam. <clears throat> to me, it's like when, when, Swedenborg translates it as animal, I think he's referring to the selfish. But I think Marika's point that the animals have greater perception of hearing and smell and perception than we have, mm -hmm. I think it's missing Swedenborg's point. I think Swedenborg's point is the selfishness of it when we're not looking for the good of the other yes. and the will that humans have potentially to strive for goodness probably there's something about the human that is that Swedenborg is stressing but it's not to me the translation of animal is is can be a little confusing because it is true to me that animals have a superior sense of sense, but we have a, pos a potential for a superior sense of will. That's that's just my thought. Thank you, Stan. Thank you. What, what it makes me think of <coughs> is, um, you know the story of Genesis chapter three, the fall, the human fall, uh, the fall into evil. So if we read, although Swedenborg doesn't take that literally, he does talk about a kind of a fall that takes place. But bear in mind that it is humanity that is fallen. It is not animals. So he talks about the way that uh, if you look at an animal, animals live in the order of their creation. This is one of the things he says. So for example, if you see the birth of a calf, of a horse, very quickly the newborn calf or horse gets up and is able to walk around. Yes. They're unsteady on their legs and they're getting used to it, but it takes only a matter of hours for them to be running and walking. Whereas for a human, a baby, it takes a year for them to be you know, up and controlling their, their feet and being able to walk around. They're certainly crawling, but it still take months for crawling to take place. And then if you talk about things like uh, speech, if you talk about fine motor control, all of these things take years for humans to learn. And Swedenborg sees that as an outcome of this fall that has taken place. I say it's not in the literal sense that it's described in the Bible, but there is this fall. We do not live in the order of our creation. That's his point. And the order of our creation, actually, at its heart, is to do good. Quite aside from all of these other things that we can't do when we, when we are born, we also can't do good. We are outside of the order of our creation. And that's what we have to, that's what we have to bear in mind when we read this animalistic mind that we are, it's a falling back into 
the old corrupt mind that we have gained for ourselves by virtue of this fall that has taken place. Whereas animals live in the order of their creation. So we're in a very, very different state in this animal mind to animals in their animal mind. Yes. Okay, that's, uh, so thank, thank you, Stan. That, that, that was very useful. Um, very useful. All right, we're going to move on and we're going to go and read the Isaiah. <coughs> Isaiah 34 again. <coughs> um, Anna, I'll just mention if you do want any any memory to cover it, I've got my little pack of things up on the table on the, yeah. uh, book, on the bookshelf just out there if you like them. That's fine. Are you hungry, darling? Would you like to have some tea? It's all good. Biscuit? Yeah. Biscuit? Come, we get biscuit. I think Pam might be out. I can hear biscuit wrappers being. <laughs> being okay. Right, we're going to read. So back to Isaiah chapter 34, and I'm going to read 8 to 15. So I'm almost now to the end of the chapter. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the year of recompense for the cause of Zion. Its streams shall be turned into pitch, and its dust into brimstone. Its land shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched night or day. Its smoke shall ascend forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. No one shall pass through it forever and ever. But the pelican and the porcupine shall possess it. Also the owl and the raven shall dwell in it. He shall stretch out over it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. They shall call its nobles to the kingdom, but none shall be there, and all its princes shall be nothing. The thorn shall come up in its palaces, nettles and brambles in its fortresses. It shall be a habitation of jackals, a courtyard for ostriches. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the jackals. The wild goat shall bleat to its companion. Also the night creature shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. There the arrow snake shall make her nest and lay eggs and hatch and gather them under her shadow. There also shall the hawks be gathered, every one with her mate. Read the last couple of verses later on. <clears throat> All right, um, principles that we might uh, take and apply to our lives and tasks we might create as a result. We think, what, what, what can we apply to our lives from what we Sorry, I didn't understand what you said. <coughs> what principles can you apply to your life from what we've heard and what we've talked about so far today? Maybe your notes. I mean, look, the one that stands out to me, as I've said already, is this one claiming righteousness and worth for ourselves. No, that's not right. <laughs> really, only yeah, God so, can say that what we yes. have really. So, as a, as a principle, you know, what can we do with this <coughs> to apply it to our life? What, should, what task should we be giving ourselves to apply, to apply that idea? Uh, don't be a sort of self righteous, you know, and think that we are so great, we are not really. No. Okay. As you were saying, notice those times when you say, Oh, didn't I do a good job? Yeah. Look at me, aren't I? Yeah, where did it come from? Where did the goodness mm -hmm. actually yeah. come from? Yes, yeah. But it's also the, the, that top, the 
highlight as well, depriving others of the truth of their faith. Like by doing that, that's what we're doing as well. We're actually being a bad example to other people by claiming it for ourselves or or um, yeah. Also the, the theft, they given me too much money back and I took it back when I worked it out. I went back to the shop and I give them back $20. Oh, yeah. And they thought I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They do, don't they? Uh, well, well, why would you bring me back? And I said, because it's not mine. And <clears throat> end of the day, when you do the balance, $20 will be missing there. Okay. And and he took, took the money. He didn't put it in a till, but he put it aside. Um, I, but I, I gave it back and I left. Yeah. But he thought I'm mad. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it, yeah. It's happened to my, my family before as well. Yeah. yeah. It's surprising how common it is. Isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I wonder about this one. You know, we were saying about the goal and trickery and of the way things seem. Is there a way to practice that? Do we question ourselves about the way things seem, perhaps? Do we check it out? I think that's what you said about practice by checking it out. It's very easy to do. It's just got to be mindful when it's happening. Just when it just happens. So the trick, the trick is those all the sources I see to be like. Well, fake news and got a fake news and fake everything's back in days online and you check online it's like, oh there's nothing yeah can't yeah. find genuine genius sources or anything these days so. yes the whole fake yeah. news i uh, thing. thing yes that's right and that, that can be hard to check but i wonder if we can do it in a more sort of basic way in terms of our day-to-day -day interactions with people too because that's you know that's more immediate that's our uh, you know the way i speak to you do i check out Yeah, I know that the whole news thing is that can get very confusing. I, I, I think we can tangle ourselves in knots with that. Uh, and then it, it tends us to focus outside as well when we when we just really the only thing we can change is what is happening in our view as well. Yeah, here and here. Yeah. What we can do. Does anyone on, online perhaps have any comments they want to add? Mm. David, I uh, um, I've been thinking about the um, the word theft as it applies to our uh, Swedenborgian teachings yeah. compared with compared with what most um, traditional Christians believe. Um, and I'm thinking that it's wrong for us to try and um, convince somebody else that our teachings are right and their teachings are not right yeah. uh, because that's theft um, if somebody believes conscientiously and um, with their whole being that uh, they uh, that there are three persons in the Godhead, for example, because that's what they've always been taught. Then it's wrong for us to try and to try and convince them otherwise, because that's theft. With th with where we're depriving them of what they, or trying to deprive them of what they earnestly believe. Yes. And I, that can be a difficult one to to work out, can't it, Carl? Like, yes. Because we yes. Do like, we do like to share our the teachings of our church. We find them, you know, wonderful and useful. And you know, where's the limit? You know, where should we stop? That's a difficult question to answer. Because where is it where somebody they might believe it, but they might be confused by it as well? And where by telling people what we believe. Gives 
them a better understanding of of what God is as well. It, uh, yeah, it, it's hard. It's a hard one. Yeah, it's a difficult question. Because you might be actually giving people a better, if, if you explain it in a non-judgmental, not ripping something away from them and not replacing it with anything else, but where you're just explaining that this is another way of thinking about it, it may enhance their faith as well. It's, oh, yeah, the same. You don't want to rip something away without giving something else. And I think that's that's the main point of what you're saying, is to not destroy somebody's <laughs> belief systems because we think ours is better. I think also particularly where it does that person good, where their where their yeah. faith provides them something, some kind of foundation for their life. I think that's that's what we must be very careful not to remove and so like you know pull the rug out from under someone and so they're good the way of describing it um, but yes i yeah i think it's a it's a good point thank you carla it's one i've heard many people say over the years i think that's that's important yeah, right before <clears throat> that whatever you take away you have to replace because believe them back there you must not take away Things unless you replace it with something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anna, did you want to say something before? Yeah, um, this movie uh, uh, can understand uh, why Jesus said, uh, only God is good. Yes. And because uh, I can't understand uh, about this world when I read the Bible for many, many years. I think hmm, we can, when we believe in Jesus, and we can also become good. Actually, all the goods are from God, not yeah. from things. So, uh, only God is good. Hmm. And the, the other question is saying, uh, that is that that more deeper than other peoples. So, how can we? Otherwise, the best is evil. How, what should we do to to get away from evil? Yeah, yeah, that's that's the fundamental question. Yeah. How do we shun that? Yeah, yeah. How do we shun that? Yes. Yeah. And it'll be different for everybody. The way we do it, it you might make a decision to go. Okay, well, I cannot look at the news anymore because it's it's doing something to my whole psyche. That's that's not not doesn't have an outward. It doesn't lead me towards good, or I can't read that particular book, or you know, I don't know. I, what do you think about that? Well, that that keys in with this eighty one, the dialogue treasury, yeah. I think. So to be not taken in by the way things seem, uh, to, to shun the way things seem and look for the reality. What is the reality behind the situation? Uh, that's what that speaks to me. Okay, we've got 10 minutes left, so I'm going to move on. Um, we'll read the last part of this chapter from Isaiah, just two verses left, <coughs> and then opportunity just for some general comments if there are any. So verses 16 and 17. Search from the book of the Lord and read. Not one of these shall fail. Not one shall lack a mate, for my mouth has commanded it, and his spirit has gathered them. He has cast a lot for them, and his hand has divided it among them with a measuring line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation they shall dwell in it. That's interesting, that first, that first um, phrase. 
interesting to answer our question. Yeah, yeah. Search from the book of the Lord and read. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have any uh, uh, final questions or comments they want to make about what we read, about anything that's come up for you today? What I will mention is that I just happened to have recorded a video that's going to go live on Tuesday or Wednesday, uh, which is about the idea that you often hear in, in sort of modern atheist circles, the idea that religion is not good. Uh, there's a book by Christopher Hitchens called God is Not Great, How Religion Poisons Everything. And it's addressing this idea of goodness. You know, the, the atheist idea is that goodness is inherent to our to our being. Goodness is a it's actually an, uh, an evolutionary advantage to be good. And this is where they think good comes from from evolution. So I'm addressing that. So that's coming out in a couple of days' time. So that's just something. Because it runs counter to what we've read today. Yeah, and it runs counter to what I see at work every every night. <laughs> yeah, just evolution, evolution would would prompt, it, particularly in our materialistic society, for people to to steal yes. all the time. To, mm. to, yeah. so. It's unbelievable that I always think we are in a third millennium now, and mankind is not any better than they were 3,000 years ago or two in biblical times. Not much improvement. It's, it's just the same, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Survival of the fittest sort of thing. Oh, indeed. Absolutely. <laughs> indeed. And that does bring us back sometimes to the more animalistic side of our nature, like just to survive. Yeah. Any other thoughts and comments before we move on? Finish? No, that's fine. Good. Uh, well, thank you for joining in this morning. Uh, what I will do is share announcements. Um, that's good. Yeah, here I've got some on my notes down the bottom. Um, so we have Bible study on uh, tomorrow night at 8 pm on Zoom as usual. Um, if you're not in the group and you want to be part of the group, let me know and I'll send you the, the link to a special link to the Bible study group. On Wednesday evening here, we have a, a special meeting. It's being hosted by Monash Interfaith Gathering. Uh, we're providing the venue and it's a, a man, and the, the title of it is the Vedanta Discourse. So this is about a section of Hinduism. Sorry? Hinduism, oh, Hinduism. And, their, and their philosophy. Mm. Uh, so that's being held here. It'll be face to face and we'll also have it on Zoom. It'll be recorded for anyone who's interested. So if you're interested in interfaith um, dialogue, then this, this will be an interesting meeting to attend. I'm, I'm of a Hinduism. Um, you do need to register for that if you want to attend. So uh, the links are in the uh, weekly update. Uh, Thursday we have question time is at 8 p.m. only. Uh, there's another meeting that takes place at 10 a.m. in the morning. And next Sunday the service at 10:30 is a traditional service, and the title is turning off the algorithm. So that's the announcements for the week. Uh, oh, I will make the other announcements, which is in the weekly update that's coming up. Is that Mr. Sam Teed turns a hundred on Thursday? Oh, really, Sam? Yes. Oh, how is he doing? Well, I believe he's quite well. So I, he was at he was at Mary Teed's funeral. I know him well. Yes, yes. Uh, and so there's a family celebration. Uh, so his brother John will be with him, and also his sister Elizabeth comes <laughs> from Perth. Is he still living alone, or or in uh, he's a now, I believe, living with his daughter. With his daughter. Quite close in, in Baldwin, close to where he used to live. Mm -hmm. uh, but turning 100 is, is pretty lovely? good. Yeah. 
and and having a brother and a sister to be there for the party is pretty good. Yeah, too, very I think. good. Yes. You know, there's not many people who can say that. Not in really. that age anymore. No, no. no. So that's just something to bear in mind. It's happy news too. He's a wonderful yeah. person. Yes. Yes. It is. Yes. So yes. Look, thank you all for joining us. Um, it be, yeah. would be nice to find out who who set up the caste system in Hinduism. All right. I'll, uh, very controversial. <laughs> it definitely was not any God. <coughs> but not, not, no way a loving God would set up such an evil system. And they believe in it. It's very much part of oh. Indian culture. Is oh, really? But is it Hindu? Is it Hindu? Is it Hindu? Like well, I, I don't know. I, don't know. I, don't know. I, I just want to wait. Yes, yeah. yes you know, very really nice. But one told me. He said it was set up by the rich people, yeah, yeah. not by God. Yeah, no God. loving God could be that cruel. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I'm just going to invite you to close in prayer. Let's, thank let's you. join together in prayer. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our time together, Lord. And we pray that you be with us as we go our various ways. You watch over us and, and lead us in all we do. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us online. Bye. We look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thanks all. Bye. Bye. Bye.